saw a little bit of Civil Twilight a few days ago. You know, I walked outside and I'm like, there's a difference. There's about one or two hours here where it's not pitch black. And that to me was like relief. or some authors that I think are really good. And I thought I would just tell you a little bit about them. So I'm not one of those people who will continue reading a book if I don't enjoy it. So I am pretty quick to put a book down if it doesn't bring me into that, you know, dream world that I want. But it doesn't have to be like a fiction dream world. It just has to be an escape. That's what I feel like. I just need to get stuck in the writing and one of my absolutely favorite books that I found out about three years ago is a really sad story. But this book, I feel, changed something I, with me. I like, I don't know. It's Stoner by John, I think he's John Williams. Wasn't he called John Edward Williams? Okay, but it's Stoner by John Williams. And this was actually like it became popular after he died because it was written in the 1960s and i think this is one of the best books that i've ever read so i highly recommend this one it's sad beautiful happy and amazing at the same time then i have a random book here that i really enjoyed it's called the space between us it's from Triti umrigar i think it's an indian writer because it is set in india and i thought this was you know just a different kind of book i i enjoyed it then when it comes to Scandinavian authors, is he Danish? Oh, him. This one, he writes gory stuff, but it's good. This was crazy, but I enjoyed it. It was quite a story, I can tell you. Then what some people already know about since they've been on my channel for a while and I've been reading all of these, Jussi Adler Olsen. He created a storytelling thing about the Department Q. So this is a whole series and I really enjoy them. You can read them as standalone novels as well, but you will kind of miss some things. But I really enjoy these. I think they're easy to read. They're also crime novels. Usually I don't like like these sorts of books but all of these i love they're easy to read they're good stories they're crazy very good then also i must be the only person in the universe who had not known about what we call here i guess northern nights which is his dark materials which is the golden compass i have not seen movies i did not know the books existed so i actually found out about these when i started my tiktok and someone said oh do you know lira and i'm like I don't know who that is, does she live in town? And then there was so many references to these books that I started reading the well, only the first one because I don't have the other two. And I mean, I understand why people think this is a fictional place. It's all about the polar bears and the armed bears. And it's an amazing story. I love stories like these, like Harry Potter when I grew up or one of my, some of my favorite books. This brings us to the sponsor of today's video, which is Blinkist. Blinkist helps you discover and understand powerful ideas from both podcasts and books, but in a short amount of time. So I realized that I don't really enjoy reading these types of books. This is just an example. I picked it up. I thought, oh, this is going to be great. It's about humans. And I realized five pages in that I'm just not, I don't, I'm not enjoying reading this. That's when I can go to the Blinkist app because I still want to know what it's about. Like I want to get the knowledge, but I don't want to spend the time to actually read that book because I'm not enjoying it. So what I can do is I can go to their app and you can see they have the same kind of books here. Like this one I've always wanted to read, but I don't think I ever will because it's not the kind of book that I enjoy. So what I can do is I can listen to it here and I can get the main gist of it. I can get all the information, but in a, such a shorter amount of time, which I think it's brilliant. 
Blinkist has condensed over 5,000 titles in 27 different categories and pulls out the key takeaways and puts them into 15 minute text and audio explainers called Blinks. It's a very quick and effective way to understand powerful ideas in just 15 minutes. Blinkist will help me with my 2022 goal of reading more of these kinds of books. So head to the link in my description to get a seven day free trial and also 25% of a premium membership. It took me two days to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Who? Why didn't nobody tell me it's this easy? I always thought it was this impossible thing and that I would never be able to do it. And then I just looked at the videos and I'm like, wait a minute, it's just a set of algorithms that you learn. And then you memorize those and then you can solve it. I need to get a new cube though, because this one is very flimsy, so I can't really do it fast. My record at the moment is two minutes and 36 seconds, and I'm after getting under a minute. So I've ordered a new cube that's magnetic. But I mean, what? <laughs> two days to, to learn this. I'm kind of shocked, to be honest. And it was quite funny how fast it went. So first day I was like, just like learning, I was just doing the same movements all the time and I was solving the beginning because you kind of start with the cross. There are many different theories how to, how to do this. But so I just followed this um, tutorial and I just kind of learned how he did it. And then I was like, wait a minute, you know, your brain starts understanding after a while, after you've done it for 20 times. And then I don't even think anymore. My hands just go so crazy. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get down to six seconds like the pros, but I mean under 60 seconds. I think that's going to be, that's good enough for me. Mm. My sister, she challenged me to this. She also were able to do this in two days and her time is now down to, I think one minute 40, but she's also ordered a new cube. Magnetic cube was very important. We've realized. So that is the Rubik's cube update. It still feels crazy to hold a solved cube. And for my whole life, I've been like, this is impossible to do, this is so difficult. It's not. Today, we're gonna go shopping and we're gonna go have lunch in the village. So I'm gonna bring you guys on this because I need to get some new gear. I need to get all new thermals for this year. I am also gonna get a new jacket or I'm gonna get a wind jacket. I don't know. So you're gonna come with me. So let's go. We're shopping. Oh, hello. Say hello. hello. Okay. <laughs> we have a lot of outdoor clothing shops here in Longyearbyen, so whatever you might have forgotten to bring for your adventures, you can buy in town. If you're needing a white dress shirt though, you're screwed. <laughs> so we started our shopping here at Longyear 78, which is where our friend Martin works. I'm after a new set of Devolt thermals as well as a wind stopper from Arcturix. Look. I want a new wind stopper that's in a color. Six thousand euros. But that was yes, the film. I love it, but I might want blue. I bought one of these wind stoppers from the brand Arcturix four years ago, and I use it all year round, several times a week. They cost around six thousand Norwegian kroners, which might sound crazy, but a good wind stopper is so important. The one I have is dark blue though, and you all know that I'm all about that color. Fun fact though, my love for colorful clothing started here on Svalbard, with my friend Olivia telling me to go out of my comfort zone. So I did, and I never looked back. I bought thermals. What 
What I also should mention is that Svalbard is tax free, so items here are a little bit more cheap than on the mainland in Norway. And all of the shops don't sell the same things, but often have different stuff from the same brands. You might remember my video from a year ago when I bought Christopher the most epic hat, that was in this shop. There is also a lot of clothing and items that have been customized for Svalbard, like these hydro flasks, and I just love stuff like that. When it comes to where you will be shopping, about 90% of the clothing stores are located on the main street. So you'll just be walking up and down this street, finding everything that you need. So now let's head into our little shopping center called Lumpen Centret, where there's a lot of good things like cafes, shops, also a hairdresser and stuff like that. Now we're gonna head to one of the stores where I think I shop the most because I like their selection of colors and what they have. So today I'm specifically looking for new thermals. So I really like this brand called Devolent. They fit me well because they have long arms and long legs and I have both of those. So I will get one of these, I think. And it's important to note that they need to be in 100% wool, merino wool, anything like that. <laughs> When it comes to winter jackets, the brand Fjellreven is 100% one of my favorites. As you know, I have this blue jacket, but in yellow, and it's one of my absolute favorite jackets. I wear actually all of the men's sizes because I think they are better made. The women's versions are very small and also very short in the arms and stuff like that. This is a men's large, just to give you an idea. And you always need space underneath, so you're warm and you have air and you can have, you know, an extra sweater or something like that. What I often also do is when I buy a new jacket, I sell off something that I don't use. So I bought that blue jacket and then I sold my red expedition jacket that you might've seen also, it's huge, but I sold that one cause I don't use it anymore. And that goes on a Facebook page in town where we sell used clothing. So that's perfect. It goes to somebody else that needs it more this season. Now we headed into another one of my favorite stores where I buy all my gloves, all my expedition gear and everything. It's Arctica. One of these. En sån träckgrej vill jag ha också. När man träcker däck. Då drar jag det i hundkoffel just nu. Mm. Alltså, då, 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 då. Så vi har asked dem att sätta det upp. Eller så blir det den. Åh oh, jävlar, okej okay, den var ju high tech. Expeditions. Så att expedition. Ja. Men vad tror du då? This is my friend Julie who works there and we often go skiing together. So I know she's the perfect person to help me with this. I need the expedition poke when I go on smaller ski trips and I need a belt to pull it with. Right now I'm using my old miner's belt that's from one of the mines here to pull both tires and have grim on. So it was definitely time for an upgrade. I also get many questions about my headlight, which is from a brand called Moonlight Outdoor Equipment, I think, I'll have to link it. And it's one of these. I have the 4,000 lumen one, and it costs, I think, let's see what it says on the back. Come on, show me. 4,000 kroners, so about 400 bucks. And you know, that's just what it is. It's very good though. While Julie got our expedition pulk all set up, we went to Fruene to have some coffee and something to eat. And this is a cafe also located in the middle of the shopping center. Very popular, very cute, and I recommend you to go there. What's really nice is that on Thursdays, they have knitting evenings, and I love that. So they're open late and people can come, bring their knitting and hang out with other knitters, and it's just a nice, you know, evening. After our fika, which is called in Sweden, we headed to pick up our polk, which was perfect because we also realized that we need to go to the post office. And what's so great about Longyearbyen is that, you know, the distances are not long. So the post office is just down here. So you can get all of your errands run in, you know, five minutes if you need to. As you will see these signs on pretty much every door telling you that if you are carrying a gun, you need to leave it at the door in a designated locker. So that's very normal for up here. My ears are not used to this. <laughs> Little 
That's the package. Before we head on home and I show you everything that I bought, I also thought that I would show you where you can buy, for example, snowmobiles and snowmobile gear. And this is one of the two shops that we have. So either you go and you buy a full brand new snowmobile or you buy one used. I have not bought a new one. I have had two different ones and I just buy them on our Facebook page for buying and selling. But so this is where you would go if you want to buy a new one. And a new snowmobile is like 150,000 Norwegian kroner. So it's not cheap. Okay, let's head on home. I buy every single one of this for Grimm. Give me on a today. Har du sett? Har du Oj, då har du sett något finare? Oh, you want to take that one? Okay, very good. Oh, wow, that is your favorite, isn't it? He loves these so much. This one, as you can see, has been through a war. Oh, yeah, that's your That is yours. Oh my gosh, look at him. He adores these. But it's fine. Oh, them are fine, ma. Oh, them are fine. Then I'll have Oh, yeah. Okay, let's look at what I bought. I shall be blue. I shall be blue this season. So, this is a Fjellreven men's large it's very important that you buy the men's version if you want them big and longer the women's version are like here and they're super tiny i tried the large women's wait too small what do you do i'm obsessed with this color are you kidding this is so nice yeah sofia Lerven is a swedish brand they're very good at outdoor clothing. So I'm gonna use this for, I think I'm gonna snowmobile in this a bit. It's 5,200 Norwegian kroner. But for a puffer jacket, that's actually reasonable. Like generally, if you buy the expedition jackets, they're like 10,000 kroners. So I feel like this is in between. And this is the expedition light. The expedition jacket on the other hand, way too much. These beautiful ones for Christopher, because as I said, we need more. They're really nice. They're from Hestra. We recommend Hestra a lot. They have the best gloves. I don't use those kind of gloves. I use these kind of gloves always. Because I am a person who get really warm hands when I am out hiking. So I use these. And I get pretty big sizes, but um, I have pretty big hands. So I'm a nine. These in Hestra. So it's a large. And I love this, because then I just put this down. And also when I'm out taking photos, this is what I use, because there really are no good gloves. You'll freeze your fingers off, and then at least you'll put them into this little, little thingy afterwards. But we got new wool pants. These are, I bought a bigger size this time, because they didn't have medium, so I'm gonna, I have no idea how these are gonna be. Let's check. Oh, these are gonna be perfect. So I can have these on top of anything that I'm doing when I'm doing activities. Oh, large, super nice. These are long and they kind of just mold to your body. So this is the extra layer that I have when I do snowmobiling or when I do anything and it's cold, like minus 30 cold. That's when you want to wear these or when it's windy. So I would have thermals underneath and then these. Yeah. So this is this one. Look, I feel like it's a version of camo. Very comfortable. 
That's gonna be nice. Yeah. I think blue is my new color this year. After being orange for three seasons. I'm gonna match my snowmobile. It's blue and white. <gasps> this is the pink. It's quite white, very light pink. Also comfortable, a little bit taller here or higher. It's a dark day. I've actually had, to be honest, a very tough week. I don't know why, I, it must be the darkness. I've always left at some point during the polar night and travel down to the mainland for like a few weeks or just no not weeks a few days for a weekend here and there so i've done like a full polar night in one go but that was a while ago now and i have forgotten how i feel when i do it and i think this year is even more dif like different because i've been working so much last year so everything caught up with me this week and it was such an uncomfortable experience <laughs> My whole mind and body just said like, you're, this is not okay. You need to do something. So I just dropped all my work. As you know, I didn't post a video last Sunday and I just said, oh my gosh, I need to listen to my body now. Something is not right. So I just took a few days not working. I have been going to the gym, which makes me feel incredibly good. So that's a thing that I need to always prioritize. It helps me in every sense of well-being. I even experienced a bit of anxiety for the first time. I, I've been very blessed to not have to deal with any of this. I don't know why my brain is just wired that way, I guess, where I don't, I rarely have any cloudy thoughts in here. It's like sunny all day. I wake up happy, go to bed happy. And that's just how I've always been. I've never had, thankfully, any sort of darkness in my mind. But for this week, I had darkness. It was cloudy in my brain and I was shocked. I spoke to my friends about it and I'm like, what is this? They're like, I think you're experiencing anxiety for the first time in your life. I was like, no, this is terrible. And it gave me a deeper sense of understanding for people who have issues with, you know, mental health and anxiety. It's terrible. But I listened to my body. I did everything I could. I spoke a lot to Christopher about it. It helped so much being open. I'm like, I don't feel good. And he was, as always, so supportive. So for me, it took me a week to get out of it which is, I know, not like the normal thing, you know? It's usually a lot longer. But so I think it was a good wake-up call as well. I've been working way too much and I haven't been, you know, taking any downtime, but that's kind of when you own your own business and it's only you, you don't really know when to stop. But I think I have a better plan for this year where I'm just a bit more organized and if I don't feel like I can put up a video, I will just have to not put up a video that day. Since I'm aiming for two a week, one a week will have to be fine sometimes. But I feel like I'm in a good space now. I took it seriously. I will consider my schedule and from here on out, be more organized and prioritize my health. So that's good. Even though you know that I love Polar Night, I think it's also very important to just talk about the fact that sometimes you might not feel 100% great. And that was me this week. And I think it's always best to be open and honest and just show it kind of like how it is. So I thought it would be good to have a sit down and just talk a bit about it. And also for future reference for myself, I can look back and say, how did I actually feel in January, <laughs> you know, of 2022? So thank you so much again for watching this video. I appreciate you all, you know this. It is all thanks to you guys that I can be able to live this life at the moment. So thank you so much. If you want to subscribe, I would love that. If you wanna like the video, I would love that too. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Where you going? Brightness looks big Where you're going Truth cannot be hid You gotta get going Easy now You gotta